So these last couple of Terraform videos have been some of the worst performing videos on my channel, but that's fine. We're going to keep on pushing through because I think learning how to do DevOps and infrastructure as code in AWS is a skill you should probably learn at some point. So last thing we did was we deployed out an API gateway and we also have a, a user interface deployed out to this domain right here. But we want to put an actual domain in front of this. So how do you do that? The way you can do it in AWS is by using something called Route 53. So we're going to try to bring in a module and set up a Route 53 domain so that we can actually have this live on a good domain. I already have a domain which I'm not using, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to route this domain to uh, Route 53 so we can kind of hit the ground running with this. All right, so let's go in Infra. I'm going to say uh, Route 53. Honestly, I don't know what the name Terraform files sometimes. Sometimes I just name them after like the AWS resources. Um, but we're going to go here and try to add in. Let's go here and say add in a route 53 zone for the domain study group finder. And I think this just requires like one resource block to get set up. So let's just go ahead and check out the code it's spun up for us. It's going to make a route 53 zone for study group finder. And then you can add some tags here, but we're not going to because why not? And then you can output the name servers. This is what you need to actually hook in to your domain name service. So like in our case, we have cloud Flare is where I bought the domain. And whatever this thing outputs when we run Terraform, we're going to use that. So let's go here. I'm going to say deploy. That's going to run our Terraform code. It's going to deploy out this new Route 53 zone to my account. And then eventually we should see the name server records print out. While that's deploying, let's just refresh this page and we should see our zone pop up. Okay, so now we're on the Route 53 dashboard. Let's go to hosted zones. And then let's click on study group finder. I think it does have to be a public zone for you to like actually have people access it. So after this zone is created, you'll see some NS records and you'll see some values over here. These are the values you need to copy into your actual like DNS service. So we're going to go and figure out how to actually change this. I'm actually going to go and delete these existing domain names because we actually want to point our domain to go to Route 53. So let's just copy these values. And we're going to add a new record. I think you can just add an NS record. And then we're going to say root. And then you can actually just put the name server in here. And we, I think we have to add four of these. So let's just go ahead and save this. I'll do the root. But then we're going to add the other ones. So let's just copy this one. Root. NS. And then for the final one, let's copy that fourth one in there. Add a record. NS. At. Paste that in. Save it. And if I did this right, what this is doing is we're setting up Cloudflare so that when someone goes to my domain, Cloudflare is going to say, you know what, you actually need to redirect and use the uh, DNS server that's on Route 53. And then we'll be able to actually create our own domains and our subdomains over here so that we can point those to internal AWS resources. Okay, so what I mean by pointing to AWS internal resources, well, we have an API that we should probably have a record for, and we have a UI that we should probably add a record for. So over here, I'm going to say, please add a Route 53 record to point the top level domain of studygroupfinder.com to my, and I'll, I'm going to reference that UI file, and I'll say to my CloudFront distribution, set up whatever ACM certificates would be needed to get this working. Auto validate. The certs using DNS. And I'm also going to say, please add a Route 53 record to of api.studygroupfinder.com to point to my API, API gateway. Again, please create the certs, the API gateway, custom domain and validate the search. So I know I asked this a lot of stuff and like if you're a beginner with Terraform and stuff, this will make absolutely no sense, but I'll try to walk you through what's going on. So basically it's going to create a bunch of different Route 53 records. And those records are what's going to tie a subdomain or the top level domain to the various AWS resources we created in the other videos. So if you, um, I don't know why I tried to add this. I'll say, why did you add this line? It should exist in UI already. Sometimes AI is just terrible, right? But luckily we're experienced and we can look over the code that it's doing and we can correct it before we just blindly accept it, right? So this stuff, it shouldn't have added to this Route 53 file. It should have moved to the UI file, in my opinion. All right, let's just accept all real quick and kind of take a peek 
at what happened. So the first thing we should look for is a Route 53 record. Okay, so we're making a record for studygroupfinder.com, so that top level domain. And this is going to actually point to the CloudFront distribution over here. So notice that this is actually pointing to the CloudFront distribution, which was defined over here. And then keep in mind, this is an A record with an alias. Typically, A records point to IP addresses, but in AWS, you can use something called an alias to point them to other AWS type of services. So that'll create a record for the top level domain. And there's another one for API, the subdomain, which is going to point to the API gateway. So notice that there's a custom API gateway v2 domain name that we set up for this. And that is going to link into our API gateway. Now for this, to work with HTTPS, we have to create certificates. There's another service called ACM, and that is where you can create certificates and have them automatically set up your SSL so that you have HTTPS when people try to access these top level domains and subdomains. So we create the certificate, but then there's another Terraform command that you can use to basically validate them. So like you have to go through and create a DNS record for those certificates in your Route 53 zone so that AWS can actually validate the certificates to verify you own the certificate. Kind of confusing, so I think we should just go over here and kind of talk about this. So let's bring in Route 53 and then let's also bring in Cloudflare. So Cloudflare is where we own the domain study group finder. And we set up NS records. The NS records are going to point this domain to Route 53. So point NS to Route 53 zone. And then we are basically inside the Route 53 what we're doing is we're going to link Route 53 to our CloudFront distribution. And then also we have an API gateway with a mono lambda. So let's just go ahead and bring this up, but mono lambda um, express. And this is API gateway with a custom domain. So again, we're going to point this to our API gateway, the custom domain that points to our lambda function. And then this is kind of like how it's all set up. I know this diagram is getting kind of crazy, but that's how the app is looking right now. We have CloudFront for hosting the UI. We got API Gateway for hosting your API on a subdomain. And this is going to be api.studygroupfinder.com over here. Over here is just studygroupfinder.com. Okay, are you guys still with me? I know this is a all over the place tutorial, but um, I might come back and actually make like a slower paced full explanation of everything. So again, what do we do? We created the records. We created some certificates. We created some Terraform modules that'll basically automatically um, validate those certificates and then we should be able to run this so let's just do a deploy and hopefully it doesn't fail it looks like it has some duplicate providers so like i could just find where this is being called twice for some reason ai added two providers we don't want that so let's just go ahead and clear that out let me hear that providers all right let's run this hopefully this will go through no, there's like some more issues with the providers. I probably should have reviewed that AI code a little bit more before I just blindly started accepting stuff. But I don't think some of these things even need providers attached to them um, because it's going to use the default region of US East 1. So let's just go ahead and just try to run this again. Hopefully my Terraform state's not broken. And there we go. It looks like it's actually making some progress. So again, it should start creating some of these RAL 53 records and putting them in our RAL 53 zone. Okay, so while it's doing that, let's go back to RAL 53 and just do like a refresh. And you'll see that it added two C names. Each C name is for the ACM certificate validation. So you'll see that there's one for API at Study Group Finder, and there's also one for Study Group Finder. Let's check out another service called ACM, called Certificate Manager. And if we go over to that, you should see some certificates for Study Group Finder. Okay. So what Terraform is trying to do right now is it's trying to verify or validate those certificates to make sure that they are proper. And the way it does that is through DNS validation, which is why we have these records. So Terraform will sit here waiting. So this can take some time to validate their certificates. I've seen it take up to like five or 10 minutes. Sometimes it never validates and you got to do a little bit of debugging. Um, but eventually it should hopefully validate these things, assuming that your DNS records are set up correctly. So after letting this spin for a little bit, I started Googling and I don't think I can actually point Cloudflare to use Route 53 as a zone if I have like the basic plan. I think you actually have to upgrade your plan to like business or something, which I don't have. So we're actually going to go to Namecheap, which is another service I've used for a couple of domains. And we're going to configure thumbnail critique to actually point to the Route 53 zone. So let's just stop this. 
And then we're going to go and rename a couple of things. So anywhere we have studygroupfinder.com, we're going to actually rename it to be thumbnail critique. Okay, let's go over here. We'll have thumbnailcritique.com. We're going to do it over here as well. We're going to do it over here. I don't even need the output, honestly. All right, let's try this again. This should actually destroy the other zone that was created with a different domain name and then recreate a new one and then recreate some certificates. And then we'll have new NS records we'll have to use and point into Namecheap. And you'll see here, it's actually destroying those other validation things we're doing for study group finder and it's going to get rid of them. And then it should start recreating the new zone and the new records. And okay, now the old zone is gone. That's good. Let's just keep refreshing until the uh, new one comes up. All right, here's our new zone and we're going to click on these NS records. All right, so let's copy it into this one. We're going to go back and copy this one. Add that one. And then finally, we're going to add this one. Let's just go ahead and save that. And after saving this, that should update my domain to point to Route 53. And then Route 53 should have control over all the domains and subdomains. And so you'll see here, it's still trying to probably validate the new certificates for that new domain. So if we go to ACM again, and then refresh, we should see thumbnail critique, pin validation. And now I think this should actually make some progress at some point. So let's just let this cook for a little bit and I'll come back. So now, as you can say, it says issued. And if we go back, we should see some additional records get added here. So we have a, a record here for our API, thumbnailcritique.com. And it also should have created a record for thumbnailcritique.com. Like it should have an A record there. I'm not sure why that's not showing up yet. Oh, probably because I called it .com.com. That's probably not what I want. So let's just go ahead and just stop this thing for right now. Maybe we can just rerun it. Sometimes you'll have to go and manually delete the Terraform lock that's in your Dynamo table. So let's see if we can actually get this to create the new A records. There you go. So now we have a new A record for our top level domain. And then eventually this stuff should all be hopefully linked together. Go to CloudFront because this is still deploying. I think it's trying to add the alias to our distribution. So if you go over here, notice that we have thumbnailcritique.com. It's been validated. We have an alternate domain name here. So I think I can actually go to my domain now. And there you go. Our app is on our thumbnailcritique.com domain. Pretty cool. And then also the API. I think if I actually put API in front of this and go to like a testing, this is hitting our express service. Although I don't know what um, API endpoint we'll need. That's API slash testing. So if I do API slash testing, it says testing hello world. All right, congratulations. If you follow along this crazy tutorial, we have learned how to set up a Route 53 zone. We learned how to get a custom domain name and point it to our Route 53 zone. We learned how using Terraform to create the zone and add A records so that we can point domains and subdomains to various AWS services. For example, like this one is pointing to the uh, API gateway. This one's pointing to our CloudFront distribution. To get the domain working in CloudFront, we have to set up an alternative domain name and then also hook into a certificate to get it working in API Gateway. I think we had to go and create a custom domain name. So if I go to this, there should be a tab over here that says custom domains. Here it is. So we have a Terraform resource that's creating this. This is linking to another certificate. The certificates are validated using the C names that are here. And then eventually Terraform will basically wait for it all to hook it together. And then of course, this is all set up with Terraform. So in reading through the Terraform, like it's not too difficult. Basically everything I just talked about in the dashboard on AWS links one-to-one -one with like a resource that we just added. So I'm gonna commit this and then you guys can kind of view what changed to see like how did this all kind of get set up. But all right, that's about it. Hope you guys learned something new by watching this and uh, yeah, have a good day, happy coding.